Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be going over how I made my last video, which is called Harry Potter Inspired Back to School Lookbook. I used a lot of effects and a lot of outfits also, so I want to explain all of the outfits and explain the effects I did. I won't be going into super detail on the effects, but I will tell you kind of what tools I use and where I learned how to do it. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out first because I will be giving spoilers into the entire video. So I'm just going to be watching it on my phone and then I'm going to go through each scene and outfit change and I'm going to tell you guys what the backgrounds are too. So let's get into it. Um, starts the video with my intro of course and then I go into platform nine and three quarters and I apparate in which was one of the hardest effects to figure out. Um, I had to mask around myself. Of course, I had a giant green screen up, too, in the basement, um, with a background kind of holder thing, and then I had four or five studio lights set up, and that was barely enough to make the green screen work. I would have liked to have more, I think, if I'm gonna do this again, because then it would take away the shadows from the wrinkles in the green screen which would have been very hard to get out. Um, our green screen is just a giant piece of felt, so it was pretty inexpensive, I think. Um, so if you're looking to buy a green screen, I would recommend like felt or paper, something cheap like that. You don't have to buy an expensive, like nice fabric one, um, even though an expensive one may not wrinkle as easily. So I operate in and I'm wearing this shirt, platform nine and three quarters, you can't really see it, but I got it at Target. Um, probably a month ago, I think. Um, so it might still be there, but it was in the men's section. And I think it was like $12, so it was really cheap. Um, super cute too, and I really like to wear it. And over it, I have a jean jacket that I got from thrifting, and then just regular black leggings. I'm also holding my wand, which I have right here. And I got picked by the wand at Universal. Um, I don't know if you've been to Universal Studios, but you can go into Ollivander's and get chosen by your wand, I guess it's called, if you're about the age of going to Hogwarts. So there's my wand. I don't exactly remember the stats about it. Um, my mom took a video of me getting chosen by my wand though, so I could probably look back for that. But yes, here it is. Also, so the background is the actual platform nine and three quarters in London, in King's Cross. You just go into King's Cross and you go to the left and back there there's a shop in the wall. Um, that's the platform nine and three quarters shop, which I think arguably has better Harry Potter merch than Universal and everything there. So also they have a great online store. So I would definitely recommend looking there for anything that you wanna buy. Um, there's this giant corral of line that you can go to get your picture taken at platform nine and three quarters But I didn't want to do that. So we just kind of stood to the side If you haven't seen my London vlog I would definitely check that out because I went to multiple Harry Potter locations on the trip um, It was last November if you want to look back into my videos to see that I think there were three parts to it So definitely go check that out So I did my intro and then I actually walked through the wall. I had to try this multiple times. I turned around and had to fake walk. And I know it looks pretty bad, okay? I'm, I'm not going to kid myself. It's not the best. But then I did an opacity keyframe. So I had it at 100 and then put it down to 0, of course. And then I did a crossfade in between the two clips in Premiere. So the... um apparating that I did was in After Effects. I masked around my body and used the puppet pin tool to deform myself and then I copied the swirling mask into three different dimensions and rotated it and then had to do a spin. It's really hard but I learned it from a YouTube video so just look up how to edit apparating or like apparating After Effects or whatever program you have because it was not super hard. You just have to follow a lot of steps. So next I walk in and I am at the Harry Potter studio tour in London, which was so much fun to go to. I went there on my birthday last year in the London vlog um, and they have the Hogwarts Express there and you get to actually go on it. Um, I did have a bunch of other pictures of the Hogwarts Express, 
well this is the real train and then there's also the remakes in Universal which I have pictures of also but I did not use them in this because I think it was most authentic to actually be in London on the real set so in that I'm wearing the same outfit and then there's a video of me panning down the train which was also at the studio tour and you can see the line where people were waiting to get on the train um, if you haven't been to the studio tour, I would really recommend going there. There's also a video of me on the train showing one of the train cars that they filmed in. Oh, and then there is a picture of um, the train at Hogsmeade in Universal. So after that, I move on to um, a really, really hard clip that took me, I think, an hour to edit. So I'm under an invisibility cloak. I can't talk. Um, but it's actually a red sheet, but it was really challenging because I was also wearing red. I'm still wearing the same outfit, so I had to key out the red and the green, but make sure to not key out my shirt also. Um, and I had to do a tracking motion on the tip of my wand, but I was moving my wand so fast that um, After Effects could not track my wand well enough, so I had to go by frame by frame and track it and I know that's what people normally have to do but it was just so annoying and it took me forever um, also I realize now that I probably should have keyed the colors out first and then done the tracking motion I will do that next time but it's really a learning process I had never done most of this stuff before so I just shook my wand and it turned on with Lumos and then shook it and it turned off um, I was looking at my map which was kind of posing as the Marauders map but this is the map of um, Universal that comes with wands that you get there so it has Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade on it and it shows you where all of the interactive features are in the park. Um, after that I turn it off so the background of this was actually in an alley in London. We stayed right next to Twining's tea. that's all I remember. We walked all the way down to the Tower Bridge one day, um, I think it was our last day there, and it took a long time. It was super far, but we went across the Millennium Bridge and walked on the opposite side of the bank. So we went through some really, really cool alleys and saw some stuff that we probably would not have seen if we didn't go that way. So we saw this alley that looked just like Diagon Alley. Also, one day when we were walking, we saw the building that Gringotts is modeled after, and I was looking at it, and I was like, that's weird, that looks a lot like Gringotts. And my mom was like, yeah, I think so. And then we looked it up later, and it was actually what it was modeled after, but it was really confusing just to see it, like, real in person as a functioning building, not just a set. The next picture um, is of the background is of the potions room in the Harry Potter studio tour in London and I'm wearing my robes that I made they are behind me this is the one on the right it's behind the Quidditch robes but if you want to see how I made them I made a video about that last summer and it was so much fun I'm going to start making more robes again because I really 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 enjoy Harry Potter stuff and it's super fun to make the robes so I will be selling them on Etsy um, let me know if you want to buy custom robes I will be making all houses and yeah I turn around to show my the back of my hood which was a special feature that we did on my robes which has kind of like prom dress material um, in the hood it's like flowers and red and it's really really cool special and intricate so I really like that part about my robes we bought the fabric for my robes in the garment district in New York City so it was pretty inexpensive for what it is and we were really really grateful to be able to pick up this special piece of fabric it was like a leftover so it was super cheap compared to what we would have paid at like Joann's um, yeah so I just walk around showing you my whole outfit I'm also wearing a polo shirt which is just a generic white polo shirt and then my Gryffindor tie which I got at LeakyCon last year in Boston which was super fun I'm kind of sad that I don't get to go to that this year I'm also wearing a little mini skirt 
but you can't really see it in this shot. The next shot is of me in the common room, so I'm wearing just a regular, like, blue quarter zip that my brother actually shrunk in the wash. <laughs> so it, it was his, now it's mine, and I'm reading The Goblet of Fire, and the pants that I'm wearing are um, from Primark in London. They are blue and red plaid, but they have um, a little Harry Potter character, and then it says 07 on it. And the background is the Gryffindor common room set at um, the Harry Potter studio tour in London. So I just show you my outfit, show you that I'm relaxing and reading in the common room. Then I go up to the dormitories to get on my Quidditch stuff. So the Quidditch robes I'm wearing are right back here. Um, my mom and I made them also, mostly my mom, a little bit of me but they are modeled after the ones that you see in the movies. They are not like the ones that you can buy at Universal, which I was seeing them yesterday and I was very confused because the Quidditch robes don't look like that in the movie, so it was very interesting to see that. To do the effect where the broom came up to my hand, it was really easy actually. I just laid a pillow down on the floor. I dropped it and made it look like I was like willing it to come up to my hand and then I reversed it in post. Um, and then after that, there's a really, really badly edited clip of me flying away. That was more for humor, but I just kind of keyed out the green screen and stood over the broom. So that one, I'm not even going to explain how I did that because it was just so bad. So the next one is going to Hogsmeade and I show myself getting ready. Oh, and the last one, I was also wearing horseback riding breeches and a long sleeve black shirt from Primark um, for my Quidditch outfit. I have a thrifted jacket that I got like several years ago and a sweatshirt from Primark that has Hogwarts on it and says H. Potter and then black leggings. Also I think I had boots on, pretty sure I wore boots. Um, and the background is first the dormitory um, at the studio tour in London and then after that it goes to Hogsmeade at Universal. So I just show my outfit and then I walk away doing the same effect that I did before for the walking through the wall. Then I go on to the Yule Ball, which was really fun to film, but kind of challenging to um, edit because I wanted to make it look like the Yule Ball, but the time that we went to the Harry Potter studio tour in London, the um, set was all like decorated for Halloween, so we're gonna pretend that it was for Christmas. So I first show a shot of the studio tour and show like all the outfits of the people there and the ice castle and then Hermione's dress. Then I move on to showing a video of me spinning around in the dress. The dress I was wearing was thrifted because in fourth grade I was Cinderella and we bought two dresses, this one and then a bigger poofier one. Um, they were prom dresses I think but just at Goodwill so really cheap and I just found this one again and I was so surprised because it fits me perfectly and it's really cute so I'll probably wear it again. The background is just the Great Hall um, from the studio tour with floating pumpkins in it of course because of Halloween. Then I put on a little like shawl shrug thing. I got it when I was like four I think so there's a clasp on it that it doesn't even fit anymore that's why I just did the ribbon. It's kind of funny, I just pulled a bunch of stuff out of our costume bin, but of course I keyed out the background again, then I go on to do my outro, and then I disapparate. So I did disapparating um, in After Effects basically the same way that I did apparating, just I deformed myself going the other way using the puppet pin tool. So yeah, I actually did have another outfit picked out for... Um, the Battle of Hogwarts, but I wanted to have the Yule Ball be last, so it's kind of more of like a fourth year lookbook instead of, you know, all of Harry Potter, but that's okay. I hope you guys liked it, and I hope you have a better understanding of kind of what went into this. I worked nine hours straight on this video to get it out for you guys, but I'm pretty proud of it. I think it turned out super well, judging that I had never done most of this stuff before. So let me know if you want to see more Harry Potter videos, more green screen videos, more effects videos, whatever you want to see, let me know. Um, 
make sure to check out my book at getoutdoorsbook.com. Follow me on social media at Rosie Revolts and check out my Etsy shop. Also at Rosie Revolts to buy one of my custom necklaces or pretty soon I will be coming out with some Harry Potter robes, which I'm super excited for. So yeah, thank you so much for watching again and I will see you guys later. Bye!